On today's show, we celebrate winter Ely style with snow, skis, and beards. All part of the fun. Kids get on the ice for a cold winter first. Good job. Terrific. Okay, we ready? I think so. And we help you get started with a darn zippy winter sport. Minnesota Bound, presented by Kinetical Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura and I welcome you to this edition of Minnesota Bound. Up first, we head north to one of Minnesota's coldest winter festivals. As Ron Scherer reports, Ely's Winter Festival comes with sub-zero temps and plenty of lumberjack beards. <laughs> Not a lot of people vacation in Minnesota in February, maybe. But, you know, we like to go the other direction. You mean go north to celebrate winter? But, but why? You can only ski and snowshoe and, I mean, it's a long winter, so it gives you some variety. Two days ago, it was 40 below. You know, if you can't embrace it, you know, it's gonna be a long winter. This may explain why the folks in Ely, Minnesota choose February to celebrate the cold and snow. Ely knows how to do winter. Woo! All right. I love it. They're doing it relay style. <laughs> to officially light the 2022 Festival Fireball, celebrating all that is winter in Ely, Minnesota. Yeah. Ely's Winter Festival salutes the season for 10 days, starting with the snow itself. Today we have the Snow Sculpting Symposium taking place. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna keep the snow out of this today. This is a pipe fitter clamp, pipe clamp I think, that we just squished to the right size. It was really cold the year we did this the first time. I thought, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> and then here we are. If you're trying to go get detail, you don't want the snow to fill it in. I'm from West Virginia. Yeah, we don't have this weather there. I, I am known by green pants. <laughs> I think I've had these pants every year that I've been here, so I guess recognizable. <laughs> this is definitely a three ring circus here. Someday we might grow up and decide we're not playing in the snow anymore. To play in the snow, some pro teams come from as far away as Germany to compete. What's that? Huh? Not all of Ely's winter art is made of snow, however. So this is our artist reception. If you just walk down um, downtown Ely, you should, almost every window, you can look in and see someone's artwork there. Ely also celebrates another side of winter, survival. We have the group from Northern Tier Boy Scout Base here, and they are doing winter camping demonstrations. Well, we're here from, uh, from Northern Tier High Adventure Base from the Boy Scout Base down the road, and we just set up a, a mock winter camp for what we were camping in with our kids. Have you guys ever slept in a Quincy? We just did. Basically. Just did, where? Over on... At Seamers Beach. Oh yeah, wait a minute, that's making it. That's awesome, guys. Too hot in your face, right? Later, things get busy downtown and, well, a bit hairy. This is the uh, opening night of the Great Nordic Beard Fest. Okay, we're gonna start out here with the beard competition. And the winner on the red side, Pim! 
coming for the shiny belt. One more time, give it up for your champion, Aaron! Congrats to all wearing an original winter coat. Coming up, kids set the hook for the very first time. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Strike Master, Midwest Exteriors MN, and by Ice Castle Fish House and RV. Up next, we're headed to Lake Minnetonka where our friends at Rapala took a day off work to teach a dedicated group of kids how to ice fish. Travis Frank has the story. Winter in Minnesota. A land of 10,000 frozen lakes. Because ice fishing is a part of, it's a part of our life. We, you know, winters are, are cold, but we embrace it. Matt Jensen lives to fish and to share his passion with others. And I love to do the same. Today we're going fishing with some kids from ACES. Hey guys, welcome to the lake. ACES stands for Athletes Committed to Educating Students. Welcome, have you ever been on the lake before? On the ice? Yeah, not, not with ice. Not, not with ice? You've never been on the ice before? Well, no. today is your first day. Welcome. We work with kiddos that just need a, a little extra help after school. Well, we have our own curriculum and we hook them in through sports and experiential learning. And then they go on a, a bunch of really cool field trips and meet professional athletes and learn in a way that they don't learn during the traditional school day. Today's field trip centers above a school of fish swimming below our ice shacks. First thing we're going to do, we're going to show you how to drill a hole. Okay, we need an official hole driller. We're going to put a tip up in the water right here. Yep, hold it all the way down. Keep pushing it. Okay. Yep, you got to hold it tight. Okay, hold it tight. And push down a little bit. There you go. Okay, let it out. All right, pull it up. Who's next? You're going next? Yeah, there it goes. We're almost there. Almost there. Oh, you did it. Oh, there's more to this sport than catching a fish. I just hope that after this day, they are just like, wow, that was not what I thought it was going to be. That was super fun. Look at this pro. Yeah. Next, we got to pick a minnow out of here. Anyone brave enough to grab a minnow? You can do it, bud. It's OK. He won't hurt you. <laughs> These kids are getting the full ice fishing experience. We've got three wheelhouses here. They're super warm. We've got TV set up where they can watch fish on camera. Wait for it. Here it comes. There it goes. Got you got him. You got him. Good job. Good job. Terrific. All right. Here, let's lift it in. You got it. Nice one. Good job. Is that your first fish? Yes. Is it really? We just want to have fun, keep them comfortable, and just have a lot of high fives and smiles. That's our, that's, that's my hope. <laughs> After all, the ACE's mission involves hands-on learning. Lesson one, patience. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh, that was my goal to catch a bass today. After celebrating their success, the kids get a special surprise. What's going on, gang? <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota wild defenseman Matt Dumba drops by to bring more good luck. You got him. Look at that. He said that was our goal. Stuck with it. Stuck with it. He's fantastic, and he's just an awesome role model for our kids. Have you tried it in here? I've been with ACES for uh, seven years now. They just go, you know, uh, above and beyond for these kids. And uh, to see the difference that it makes, you know, day-to-day -day basis is, uh, is huge. Right here, she said she was going to get a bass. She did it. 
<laughs> Five minutes later. On a cold winter day, fun on the ice heats up. <laughs> Turns out, fish house field trips make dreams come true. I've been wanting to go fishing for a long time. And um, I actually went fishing, and I caught what I wanted to catch. Mission accomplished for a new group of ice fishing aces in the land of 10,000 frozen lakes. Just to experience that with them and see the smiles on their faces, um, you know, so worth it. Aces! Still ahead, the story of an American conservationist who made big news with brown bears. Yep, Tim Treadwell spent time with Minnesota Bound. And, uh, you know, that, that could be But fun. first, a speedy sport you might just like to try. We help you get started next. Closed captioning provided by Star Bank. The outdoor sport of racing on ice, otherwise known as speed skating, originated in the Netherlands, dating back to the early 13th century. It's fast and it's fun. In fact, there's a place right here in the Twin Cities that'll show you how to get started. Follow me. Welcome to the Minnesota Oval. I'm so excited to be here. I'm um, really ready to learn how to speed skate. Oh, perfect, perfect. We're excited that you're here. So what's some of the gear that we need to get started? All right, this is a great beginner skate. For one thing, it's a lot more comfortable and it goes higher for stability. This has a pin in it so that we can stop it from clapping, which makes it much easier to start skating with. This is a clap skate, so it uses more muscles so that you can make better extension. More advanced skaters wear these skin suits that are very form-fitting. And I understand that you offer classes for beginners on how to speed skate here. Yes, we have a couple of different ways that we give lessons. We, um, we have the try speed skating where they can sign up and they try for one day and we um, get them skates. It's, a, it's free of charge. And the other way is through Roseville's Park and Rec. We have a learn to speed skate and we have about three sessions. And we also have rental skates for it or you can use your own. Can anyone speed skate? Yes, it's for all ages. All right, well, it's been about 10 years for me since I skated last. Oh, that last. doesn't matter. I'm I'll sure be you, good? Yeah, you'll be good. All right, good to go. well, let's gear up. All right, thank you. <laughs> Ready to go. Pull it back. There you go, perfect. Okay, so to start skating, the basic position is you try to bend your knees at 90 degrees. Don't let your knees come in together. And then from there, we also have an arm swing, just like walking, it's opposite arm with opposite leg when you skate. And it's just a pendulum swinging from your shoulder. Yep. Okay. And then the push is try to do straight to the side. There you go. I may just get as far as this wall today, Susan. Yep, yep. I don't know. Okay, are we ready? I think so. All right, here we go around the oval. Nice, nice job. There you go, arms straight forward and backward. There, nice, Laura. Good, really nice, nice. You've improved a ton. Arms straight forward and back, kind of right by your butt. Good. It doesn't help with 20 mile an hour winds, I'll tell you that. There's a learning curve, that's for sure, but it's, it certainly is a good time, and with 20 mile an hour winds, it's keeping me nice and slow, so I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing a great job. Nice. Nice. I'm doing it. Try to bend your knees a little bit. Nice and relaxed. Nice. I'll be ready for the Olympics in like 2046, I think. 2046? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Not 2026. You know, we need a good 20 years before okay. it's gonna happen, but I'm, I'll be ready. Okay. Straight ahead, we go back in time as bear filmmaker Timothy Treadwell takes a walk alongside Ron Sharon. Oh, that, that could be Minnesota Bound is brought to you by 
Hewitt docks, lifts, and pontoon lakes. Leech Lake Area Tourism. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Up next, a most curious Minnesota-bound classic. Timothy Treadwell earned almost rock star status back in the 1990s as a brown bear photographer and filmmaker. Heck, he lived with Alaska's bears for 13 summers. Turns out he also made time for Ron Sharon. A stroll in a city park with Timothy Treadwell makes for hair-raising bear stories. And, and I'm living around 100 bears at a time. I'm within visual sight 24 hours a day. I average about 20 good charges a year. That's about the, I had 19 last year. Living with charging bears? This is no Goldilocks tale. For nearly a decade, Treadwell, a California native, has spent his summers watching and photographing the world's largest grizzly bears, those found in Alaska and commonly called Alaska brown bear. Males average eight to 1,200 pounds as adults. I have several bears that are pushing the envelope of 1,500 pound dinosaurs, uh, 10 to 11 feet long from their nose to their butt. But Treadwell does more than take big bear pictures. He walks with bears, he talks with bears, he camps with bears. When they go by my tent, it's like Jurassic. The tent will go ba 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 like that. And, uh, you know, that's, that could be frightening. But. Treadwell carries no weapon, no defense, and he's been scared plenty, sometimes every day. There's probably not a day or so that goes by out of three or four months that you don't have something happen that's, that's weird. No, I won't play dead because where I'm at, bears are not used to people at all. They don't look at you um, in fear, so playing dead is dead. So I have to stand up and be part of the hierarchy, be part of the ladder. He comes up, mm -hmm. charging to, towards you, mm -hmm. You stop, you stare him in the face, and then you start running towards it? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I charge That's... at them. Huh? If I do not get the respect of the bears by charging back, they will run me from that day forward. Treadwell is very aware that the next bear may not buy his bluff. He knows he's easy prey to such a huge omnivore. But Treadwell walks with bears for a cause to preserve the bears' wilderness habitats. Maybe it's only a matter of time before I get a good whacking. Um, but for me, we're losing so much habitat, so many bears, so many species worldwide that it's taking this kind of action to draw the attention. Treadwell says there's only about 180,000 brown bear left in the world. Alaska harbors about 30,000 of those. The illegal poaching of bears is also a worldly threat. Treadwell also conducts his own bear studies, recording previously unknown observations about bear behavior. Everything's documented with, for instance, how long a bear stays underwater to, uh, to fish, to how many fish it gets. They're so perfectly in balance with, with nature. Uh, the fish have spawned, they're going to die anyway. To spread his bear message, Treadwell sells his unique photographs, and soon there'll be a book about his times with the grizzlies. Well, it has provided me with a complete life. I mean, I went from being a nobody to, to doing programs like this, for goodness sake. So. But Treadwell's devotion to bears is intense. You know, they're, they're the heroes. They are, they are the lifeblood of this whole thing. The rest of the bear story is up to us. Do we share the wild earth with these giants, or do we push them ever closer to teddy bears? Treadwell was certainly an interesting character and was definitely living a wild life. Yeah, certainly was. Um, he and his girlfriend were actually victims of a brown bear attack in 2003. A float plane pilot flew out to their Alaskan camp to pick them up and found both the bear and two bodies. Very sad story. Well, that does it for this week. We will see you back here next time. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.